Hey friends, thanks for coming back out to the house again today. I'm Art. I'm Dana. And this episode is going to be a little bit different than our typical niche of wrenching on cars and spirit reviews. But we are wrenching. Yes, we are wrenching. So we purchased a Cozy Yard Alexander 12 by 20 permanent gazebo. And it came in from freight from California this week <laughs> via four big boxes, two here, two on our deck. And we've already unloaded the two larger boxes to put everything out on the deck to make sure anything wasn't damaged really bad while the shipping guy was still here. But we are going to create this episode on assembling this gazebo. Hopefully this helps you out. If so, make sure you post up a comment. There's not going to be a whole lot of dialogue in this, except for if we run into areas where we think we really need to call something out, where we're putting something together, and maybe the instructions aren't quite as clear, because the manual is a little thin. More pictorial in well, the manual. Yes, yeah. So if, if you like word-by-word -word instructions, the guy probably is not the best. I, I like pictures, so pictures is good for me. I like pictures as reference and a nice paragraph that I can read exactly how to do it. Okay, all right. <laughs> I'm sorry for this one on you. Then. <laughs> I know, right? All right, so the first thing we're going to do is unwrap all our parts, put it out here in the yard, and we're going to sort the letter pieces together so we know what all is, is there, and it's easier for us to go ahead and grab. So follow along. I hope this helps you out. Thanks. So we had our first casualty in shipping, and I'll try to show this. There is a little bit of indention here in the metal. Nothing that a pair of vice grips can't pull out, but so far everything else has looked pretty good. All right. Well, a bigger casualty is this one right here. Should still be able to pull it out with some pliers, but it is a a bigger bend. Unfortunately these are all wrapped up with thin styrofoam so there's not a whole lot of protection in these boxes with all the weight. I'm still not overly disappointed. All right we went through what Dana affectionately calls parts bingo of going through the manual and making sure all of our parts are there. The only items that we did not count were the roof panels, were the nuts and bolts and clips in the bags because they were over a hundred. Uh, we just don't have time for that. So we're hoping that the quality control is in place for that. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on building the first parts. So follow along. All right, just a quick check-in. We've completed all the corner posts and the center support beams. Everything is going along very smoothly. Instructions are right on par, although we're just in the first steps. But I just wanted to make sure I call that out in each of these different sections as well. All right, for the pieces that were bent, I went ahead and took some vice grips and bent them back out. As far as the next step for this, we actually have to mount both of these together using this joiner plate. Is, it's called a union bar. Oh, I'm sorry. Dana corrected me. A union bar. To the notch. To the notch. So there's to the notch. notch we go. To the notch. Okay, there is a notch here in the bar that should... Actually, it, it's a little bit off. Those. Those. These two. That's, That's it? For now. Oh, 
I don't think the instruction manual points out to have saw horses, which will certainly come in handy for joining these, but fortunately with our patio table chairs, it actually works out great. All right, we're going to take a pause for the cause on the building to point out a couple of things. So we thought we were moving along really well with step two. However, this is where the manual starts to fall apart. So we built four of C and Ds thinking that that's kind of what we needed to do. We did miss the point where up at the top it says C times 2 and D times 2. However, where the manual falls apart is that it fails to tell you about E. And on the longer sides of the gazebo, E has to go in between C and D. There is nowhere in the manual where it tells you to put E in. It just kind of skips to the guide rails on mounting them. The only way you could figure it out is by kind of moving along in the manual. Step four is not even for this gazebo. The next page doesn't really say a whole lot. So I had to go all the way to page 12 to see a bigger picture and see that, all right, this is where E actually goes in. So we're going to disassemble two of the C and D that we have completed, slide in some E's, and then jump back into the regular steps of mounting the rails. So it almost seems like what Cozy Yard has done is mixed up their different size Alexander models in the instruction manuals. So if you've ordered a smaller Alexander, you may not have any problems with the manual. Yeah. Yeah, it may be perfect for you. And I agree with you. They were conserving trying to put everything in. However, unlike better builders, when they put the manual together, they will typically say, if you have this, disregard or do this. Or skip. Or skip. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they didn't do that on this one. So you just got to kind of figure some things out on your own, and that's what we're doing. All right, so we're gonna get back to it. Important part on the next step of this is making sure that your C1 and C2 and D1 and D2 are on the same letter panel. So don't try to put a C1 on a D panel. Uh, it just doesn't work out. So make sure that you're focused on that for these. So our D2 here is going to go up top. Make sure the bend is going towards you and not up over the side piece. Top can be designated by where you put the union bar screws in. This is the bottom. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Where you put your union bolts into, that is actually the bottom. So that should help you kind of keep things aligned in the right place. And from here, it's just more of same bolts. Just get one started so it doesn't slide all over the place. All right, we'll get back at it.
pause for the cause here this is the E bar and I want to point out one piece where the E's actually come together there's going to be a gap here in the middle this is where your center post slides up into so you don't want to tighten these down all the way because you may need a little bit of flex to slide it up underneath here before you end up bolting them down so just a little tip there we're getting ready to go ahead and put up all the corner posts and the center support beams so here we go Hey friends, we are back for day two. So yesterday we got started late. Uh, after work, we had about two and a half hours of daylight that we were trying to accomplish as much as we possibly could. And if you're looking at purchasing this or have purchased this and you read through the reviews online, you know that uh, it's a very high probability this is a multi-day project unless there's several of you and you're starting early in the morning and working until dark at night and then you probably could get it all finished uh, but because it's just Dana and I it's going to take us a few days especially since we're only working after hours I want to do a quick recap on what we finished yesterday since a portion of it actually didn't make it on the video and then what the next step is going to be from here all right so all corner support posts are done we actually put on the center support beams as well had everything tightened down now what we ended up having to do with this because we didn't put these in first as we were putting in the long pieces a little difficult with only two of us that I had to get up on a ladder and lift up the center beam the uh, long piece here in order for Dana to slide this center support beam straight up and once we had it in there then we were able to go ahead and lock it down but everything else is coming along really well. Everything is fitting pretty nicely. And so far, it's looking really good. All right, so next step is actually putting on this sealant that is gonna be on each of the joint areas where the union bars were used to uh, join everything in together. I'll show you exactly where that's going to be here in a moment. but. This is the tube. Thankfully, they actually have this on the parts list in the manual because uh, otherwise you wouldn't have any idea what in the world this is. Everything is written in Chinese, so when I'm actually applying this to the joints, I'm going to be using gloves 
just because I have no idea what's actually inside of it. And uh, I just want to be a little bit cautious about it. Fast forward a few hours and the joints are sealed up. And that's done on both sides. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step of the manual. Follow along. A couple of tips on these corner pieces. The lines are going to go to the outside. You have a J1 and a J2. J1s go to the left of every upright support beam. J2 is going to go to the right. If they don't line up for the holes on both the top and the bottom, then you know you have it backwards and you got to go ahead and rotate them around. Not sure if the camera picked it up, but one of the actual metal tabs on that corner support beam was bent. So I had to take the vice grips and actually bend that back over in order for the corner support arm to actually screw into it. Easy fix, but just one of those things to pay attention to. All right, as I had mentioned earlier, this is not in its final resting place. So, Although I did put the ceiling on the joints, they may end up flexing and maybe even ripping a little bit when we do move them. So on page 10, we are going to skip this part, which actually goes over those joints until we get it to where we want it to go. And then we can come back to this. It's not necessary for the next steps. So this we can sideline until a little bit later. The next step that we're on is actually hanging the, the hangers for the curtains that will go up. Now if you do have a dual track one like this one, you want to make sure that you put seven on the front and seven in the rear. Now a few things that we noticed with some of these that with mass production and these are being molded as far as injection plastic more than likely, some of these have issues as you can tell there's little tabs that are still on there that allow it to actually slide in that we need to cut off or trim in order for them to go in and slide easily back and forth with the curtains so just something to keep an eye on too all right quick update on the hangers as we actually made an error and the manual points it out pretty well but we just kind of jumped it on the short sides that just have a C and D that is on each sides those have seven hangers on each track on the longer sides you have a C and a D on each end those each have seven hangers on each track on the middle two your E's that is where you are going to have five hangers on each rail for the hangers themselves I'd mentioned that a number of them have uh, discrepancies from the injection molding. I'm going to call them chads. We probably had a dozen of them that had chads. And we're going to say, yes, it was the chad that kept them from going in. So the hanging chad. The hanging chad. 
Uh, so I took my Dremel tool and actually sanded them down and now all of them fit really well. All right, on to the next step. Connect the inside roof connect with the Connor roof bar. You have to really just laugh at the grammatical errors in these manuals. All right, another shipping issue. This is actually bent in just a little too much, this corner piece. So we'll just bend that back out and we are good. I think several of these looking at it may end up having the same things. So certainly make sure you pay attention to that prior to mounting these up in the air or it may be too difficult to fix them. A quick update on our approach here with this because manual really doesn't say anything other than two people is needed. We figured trying to build it out in the yard and pick it up with two people, uh, it just wasn't going to work. So thankfully by putting in each of the corner pieces which are M, 
the bolts will actually hold them suspended in the air. And we put in all four of the N1s, two on each side, and then both of the ends this way to end up supporting the top inner shelf. Now we'll put up the N2s and move on to the next step. All right, so these are the P's that connect the M's and the N. The pointy end will actually go inside this track on each side here. Holes need to be down because there are holes for each of these. Now when you put the pointy end in, this side is not gonna end up going in by itself where it needs to go. So you need to bend it a little bit where it can get inside it's going to bend this but that's okay then push it back down and mount the screw right there in the middle that'll take care of whatever slight bend that you put in it all good for the two outside screws we're going to wait on those because we have to put in the Q pieces first. So we'll just put in the one screw for the end to hold it there in place and then we'll move on to the next step. finished product you have your P that ran across here connected the M's and the N in the middle then you had your Q which is right here Q runs across and then overlaps each other there on the center and goes across your Q will overlap your P and then this piece right here in the corner is R and you have one bolt that goes through all of them and locks them all in really tight. Looks clean. I really like the support over the support. So, so far everything is lining up very nicely. On to the next step. 
All right, next part is going to be K, which is the outer top, and it goes right on top of this one. All right, now that we have the roof on, now it's time to go ahead and get the roof panels. This is actually pretty cool. We were a little concerned on whether the panels would be bent up inside, but they've got them double boxed with styrofoam around the outside. So very happy with the packing for these. Hopefully that's a good sign of the contents. Exact box we needed for the next step. Is it really? Yeah, you want your gloves? Well, I'll be. They actually have rubber corner pieces here on all the corners to keep the edges from getting bent. That is awesome. Good morning, friends. We are back for day three and hopefully the last day on this build. Uh, now that it's a Saturday, we got plenty of time. We are on what? Step 11, page 15. Step 11, page 15. We're getting to the good part. The roof panels. Here, we are putting these metal brackets on the edges of the roof panels. What we have noticed is, although we're very happy that all of these parts are powder coated, there are little metal tabs on the top of these that, in the process, the tabs were not pulled up high enough so when they were powder coated, they were powder coated with the tabs stuck to the larger piece. So we got to take a small flat tip screwdriver and actually pull those tabs apart so they can slide onto this. So we'll go ahead and get started on this. We'll come back and just kind of let you know when we're done and ready to start putting things up top. All right, so we have all of the upper roof panels done. All the metal brackets are on each one. And what worked best for us is Dana was the one bending all the tabs on the brackets and I was putting them on the panels themselves to make it a pretty smooth process. Now we're going to go ahead and work on putting these on top there. In the step of putting on the upper roof panels we did discover a serious flaw in the instructions. So if you recall a few steps back, we actually screwed in this top panel. Well, with that panel in place, these cannot go in. After wrestling back and forth and trying to figure out exactly what in the world was keeping it from sliding all the way up, uh, Dana had the idea of actually taking that top panel off and crazy as it is that actually ended up working and allowing these to slide all the way up you couldn't even tell with it there and if you looked underneath it it appeared that these were sliding all the way up to where they were supposed to be but that was certainly wrong but now that we've got that we just got it unscrewed so we can lift it and then slide the panels back on and then put it back in its place corner pieces on here we have our retaining piece there screwed down in the front. We are not tightening these bolts down because there's another one that goes over this. So we'll hold off on tightening those and we're going to go ahead and continue to work our way around. So follow along.
All right, another learning lesson and tip. When we were putting these panels on, the manual does not say to follow a certain particular order. So we were putting the corner pieces on and then filling in the middle. Can't do that. Actually have to start in one corner and then work your way towards the other corner or the middle V panels will not line up with one another. So make sure you do that or you'll have to go back and take out panels like we did. All right, upper roof is now complete. Now the next step is actually added in the cross beams that go through the middle of all the lower roof brackets. So we'll go ahead and get started on that really really close to finishing the roof. So follow along. Okay for the next part as I'd said we're actually putting in the middle support beams for the lower roof. Now we were initially just trying to put these together and then mount them all as one, but that really didn't work out so well. Uh, Dana came up with the idea of just mounting these pieces first, which are Q3s. U. I'm sorry, U3. Put that on there first, then do the same for the other side without the bars, then mount your bar onto it, then use the middle bracket that connects the two bars together. U4. U4. Put those in each end. Lo loosely tighten the screws up because they have to be able to shimmy a little bit to the left and right in order to be able to line up. Once you have it mounted up to the center beam, then you can go ahead and tighten everything up and get ready to move on to the next bar. next two steps are now officially done. All the X panels and W panels all have been fitted with the metal brackets that were remaining. So now all that's left is just to start assembling the lower roof. Let's get it. All right, now we're moving on to the next big step of installing the lower roof panels. And I wanna make sure I point out in the manual where it says, please put the panels on the frame anti-clockwisely. Uh, not quite sure how to interpret that, but we're gonna try to figure it out. Clockwise, <laughs> counterclockwise. Clockwise. Counterclockwise. And be wisely about it. <laughs> All right, here we go. In this next step of assembling these lower roof panels to the skeleton itself, all right, so we have these rubber spacing blocks that will go underneath this track. Then you'll have this bolt that will go down through it, follow it up with these screw-on nuts that go underneath. 
So I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished now. All right, so that's how it's going to look. halfway through the assembly certainly a couple of areas that gave us some challenges of lining up at the very top rails but with a little bit of finagling we were able to get them in one area we did learn is on these cross support beams the U's we had one backwards and the holes were about two inches away from where the holes in the actual sheeting was supposed to go. So I'm not sure if you could see this here, but this one is another one that we have to change that's backwards. So we have six inches away on this one, and then over here, it's only four inches away. So we're gonna have to end up rotating that bar around to and get this, it correctly. And this one is backwards, the four inches backwards. Yeah, the four inch one is the one that's actually backwards. So if you're putting the lower roof panels on and the holes that go through them, that go in through the U support beams are not lined up and they're about two inches apart, then you know that you have a bar that's been put on backwards so you'll have to take it off. All right, friends. We have successfully accomplished this with another learning lesson as we are working on this side here. The U-bars that are those right there, the center support beams for the lower roof, it's best to keep those loose because there is room in the mounting holes for those bolts to go through to where it will allow it to shimmy a little bit. That helped tremendously on this side for where the panels just didn't line up 100%. We were able to shimmy the panel or the bar a little bit to the left or right, and it helped out, man, such a great amount of time saved. I wish we would have figured that out on the first side. But nevertheless, the roof is done. It is looking fantastic. And now we're gonna to move to going back to one of the steps in the book earlier on actually putting the brackets over the union spots where they actually come together. So we're gonna cover those up now that we have actually moved the gazebo to where we permanently want to mount it. The piece that goes over the joints will end up mounting here on the top and then go down and then there is a secondary bracket that goes here on the bottom of it that screws into them. So covers up the joints. So it covers up the joints really nicely. You don't even see the area that you put the sealant on earlier. One big issue that we discovered in the shipping, as we all know, it gets very hot in shipping containers. Things like glues do not do very well. This was poorly thought out had they put some of the styrofoam in between each of these pieces, we wouldn't have this issue, but they are all stuck together. These are the screens that go up top and screen has actually started to come off of its panel that it's on. So we're gonna try to separate these with the screwdriver. We may have to end up going back and putting glue on all the panels again. Okay, Dana and I used flat tip screwdrivers and just used a hell of a lot of patience on pulling these apart. As you can see, this one is pretty bad where the screens completely come up. So all the chunks of glue that you see are heavy in some areas, very light in others, but thankfully none of the screens are damaged and this can be salvageable of just applying some more glue which we'll do put it out in the heat heat up the glue that's on there smear it around a little bit more before we actually mounting so we're going to end up doing that saving it to the very last step since it's not important 
we're going to go ahead and head to uh, the curtains. All right, so when it comes time to do the panels, they're all going to be zipped up together. So all of the outside curtains are zipped up into one mess, and all of the inside screens are zipped up into one mess. The best advice I can give you for knowing which panel goes where is to count the grommets. The center panels attach to the center pole here, and there is a strap. On the center panels, five grommets out from the center, and you know that you have a center panel. When it comes to attach it, it's just really simple. You just put the bottom in and snap it up into place. And that's it. For the corners, the corner pieces all have seven grommets from the center tie. It is just that simple. Once you get organized, it goes by very quickly. On to the final part, which is going to be the screens for us now that the curtains are done. You have a total of three different bolt holes. One here, one here, and then this bolt, which we put on earlier in the process, we will actually be taking that back out and then putting it back in up over the screen. So we initially had thought that we were two bolts shy. Well, that really has a big part in that so we're actually not short on any bolts thankfully but we'll go ahead and get these started and then we'll show everybody how it looks once it's done All right, all the screens are up. I'll tell you right now that I am not happy with the fitment of these. It sucks, to be honest. In addition to the fitment sucking, all this glue that's on here, through here, we need to go ahead and scrape off so it doesn't look really bad. But I flipped them over I'm not sure the instructions might have given a better idea of which way these were supposed to go but it was tough to say and I did not like all the glue showing so I flipped these other the over the other way I just could not stand all the ugly glue on top of the screens the the raw end being seen also I put in self tapping screws at the top of each of these because they were bowing they were bowing all out and I didn't like that so I added in self tapping screws on each of the major joints that helps but overall I'm just glad this piece of it is done okay we are finally done with this and I couldn't tell you I'm extremely happy not that just we're done but the overall result of it I'm absolutely thrilled it really transforms the deck it, it just it looks like something totally different so any learning lessons for you? Yes, actually lots of learning lessons for me. One is choose your assembly partner wisely. <laughs> yeah. Two, try not to do this in the middle of summer. It's hot. And three, no matter what time of year you're out here building it, wear sun protection, sunscreen, any sort of shading clothing. Yeah, those are definitely important things. Uh, we spent about a total of 18 hours over the course of four days based on our schedules to get this done. There was a few points where we both were frustrated with each other because the equipment just was not going as easily as we wanted it to. But hey, patience is really the big key with this and taking your time and things come together for the most part pretty nicely. But most importantly, we hope that this actually helps you if you purchase one of these 
and you're getting ready to install it. Give us a thumbs up, share some comments. We'd love to be able to engage with each one of you. Take care, stay safe. We'll see you next time.